Good evening. Welcome to Storytime. My name is Jenny Lynn James and I'm the author of a series of travel memoirs. This evening I'm going to read for you from the first memoir which I published in 2013. The initial publication was called Escape from Air. Air is Gaelic for Ireland. Second edition I call Escape from Ireland. So tonight I'm going to read about my adventures living in Ireland for seven years. So the summary at the back. Escape from Ireland is a memoir that gives insight into Irish attitudes and traits as seen through the eyes of a new immigrant with a mix of warmth, joy and hope it explores the highs and lows of settling in a new country. Humorous trials are endured, like Irish speed dating, disastrous home renovations, and maniacal bosses. Escape from Ireland shows how hard work and determination, combined with an easygoing, fearless attitude, can bring great success against the odds. Now I will read a little of the opening chapter. A bumpy landing. I fell on the conveyor belt, clutching a large suitcase nicknamed Mini Fridge. I could not help but laugh hysterically as a kind lad held me up before I went around the bend. That was my introduction to Dublin Fair City. I arrived on Thursday, 1st of July, 2004, on a 10 hour overnight flight from Los Angeles. We arrived at the crack of dawn. With an eight hour time difference between Greenwich Mean Time and Pacific Time, it was very hard to stay awake. The airport looked old and dated. Though it was 2004, I felt I had stepped back into the 1950s. Black and white photographs of hundreds of Irish emigrants um, arriving in America lined the walls. Floors were tiled with brown and beige colored linoleum and buildings were painted in beige oil paint. It reminded me of an old Caribbean airport. We even had to walk to the terminal, which I found quaint. We walked down the staircase from the jet and across an airport roadway with attendants controlling the flow of passing vehicles and crossing passengers. The immigration officer asked why I had come to Dublin. I showed him my job offer from the company and he said, carry on. I would have to get a formal work permit and have my passport stamped in town. I joined the line or queue as Dubliners call it, at the taxi rank. When my turn came, a taxi minivan was summoned to take all my bags. They could not fit in a car. The driver loaded the van and asked what I had in all those bags. Had I come to live in Dublin? Yes, of course, I replied. I've flown in from Los Angeles. The driver was small with short limbs and a mop of prematurely gray hair. I was disappointed not to find a red-haired driver. I had been programmed in America to see the stereotypical Irish red-headed leprechaun. I could tell he wasn't old, yet he wasn't young. His round stomach was probably the clue. He had piercing green eyes and a thick accent that was not easy to understand. I asked him to take me to Harcourt Hotel on Harcourt Street. There was construction everywhere as we drove along. The driver showed me the new Tesco extra construction on Malhide Road. New sports grounds were being erected along the way. I remarked that instead of high rises, the urban sprawl seemed to be quite flat. Many old houses were mixed in with shops, pubs and bookmakers. What's a bookmaker? 
I asked my taxi tour guide. It was quite puzzling to imagine so many places making books. That's where you bet on the horses. Ladbrokes, Paddy Power, Hackett's can make you a fortune. Well, I have never bet on a horse in my life. I wouldn't know what to do. Betting to seem to be a national pastime. The slew of pubs that lined the streets showed that drinking was also a national pastime. Along the way, I learned about the weather and the Celtic tiger, a term used to describe Ireland's rise in financial fortune. I also learned about the best places to live in Dublin, the political parties, the government, and other gems from the taxi driver's store of knowledge. We finally got to Harcourt Hotel, former residence of George Bernard Shaw. I was charged 38 euros, which I rounded off to 40 euros, even though the meter actually showed a tip was included. I thought I got an excellent deal. This price, however, turned out to be a good rib tickler when I described my journey to colleagues at the office the following week. As I settled in Dublin, I decided to try dating Irish men. After all, I was young single and ready to mingle. So let me tell you about one of my adventures, speed dating in Dublin. I went online to see what was happening in Dublin and my eyes caught an advertisement for a speed dating event on Thursday evening at a bar in town. Aha, I thought that would certainly give me a thrill or a scare as the case may be. I filled in the application form, then hesitated for five minutes, walked to the kitchen and drank some water. Then I came back and hit the send button. I waited with bated breath to get home from work on Thursday so I could get ready for the event. How many guys would be there? Would they be cute or geeks or jocks or what? Would they have met foreign girls before? What would they think of me? What should I wear? I had to look cute but not tarty. My wardrobe was limited because everything seemed to be on a container en route to Ireland. Should I put my hair up? Should I leave it down? How much makeup should I wear? I settled on a blouse with jeans and high heel sandals. My hair was straightened and left loose. I wore a reasonable amount of makeup. Knock them dead, I thought. Too bad if they don't notice. The event was in a bar on St. Eustace Street in Temple Bar. This was the old cobblestone touristy part of the city. Looking for the right bar took some time, but I was early. I must have been one of the first to get there. The organizers were at the door to welcome me, checked my name on the list and gave me a name tag. I promptly ran to the ladies' room to powder my nose. No guy would see me as an eager early bird sitting alone. Yikes! There were one or two other girls in the ladies' room, so I was not alone. I chatted briefly with them. One of them had done it before, and the other was a first-timer. I pretended to be a first-timer. However, I had done it in Los Angeles and it proved useless. So as a first timer in Dublin, I waited and sized up the competition. Too fat, I thought. Hmm, looks a bit tarty. Some of them might like that. What was I doing? I did not have to compete with these girls. Those lucky Irish lads would surely be happy to meet this newcomer who arrived just two weeks before a Caribbean woman who had come via Los Angeles. Now that was a story. So during the speed dating, this is what happened. The noise of the discourse at each table was deafening. 
I had to shout over the din to be heard and make an impression. I had read a book which said to let the guy do most of the talking and act coy. I tried acting coy in the short five minute meetings, but it was not easy. My first prospect was arrogant, telling me about the extreme wealth in Ireland at the time. He must have imagined I had dropped in from the bush in Africa. The next guy was Dr. Who's Who. He probed relentlessly with one question after the next. He gave me many names of people I could not possibly know since I had recently arrived. He must have been two feet tall. If I went out with him, I could never wear heels. Even in flats, I could eat soup off the top of his bald head. No, 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 I decided. Then Eddie sat in front of me. This tall, lanky hunk with longish hair really had me hooked. He had the most wicked smile and teasing green eyes. I was mesmerized by the conversation. Maybe it was his piercing eyes that searched my cleavage or his big hands. He looked like a bad boy in his jeans and shirt, which had a couple of buttons undone. I checked yes, triple yes. My heart was a flutter. Then the bell rang. We both stared longingly at each other as we parted. I had to meet him again at all cost. If you'd like to find out what happened next, with the dating in Ireland. This book is full of stories. So please check out my website, jennylindjames.com backslash books, and you will learn about all the books that I've written, my travel memoirs of every country where I've lived, Escape from Ireland, a memoir of love and adventure, in Ireland. JennyLynnJames.com backslash books. Please look at the website.